Hello and welcome to my mini-series on Counter-Strike Analytics. Um, let's jump right into it with an explanation of what analytics means. Now I know some people, this might be a new term, so here's the definition. It's uh, information resulting in the systematic analysis of data or statistics. In layman's terms, you're essentially extracting information from a group of statistics that you can actually use. Our use case is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Um, there's two ways I believe that analytics can really be used in a productive sense in esports in general, but specifically in Counter-Strike especially, and that's firstly to find predictors of success. Now, which things are we looking for in the stats that'll actually help a team win? Now, this can be highly valuable for teams trying to figure out what they're doing wrong and which areas to really focus on when training, when practicing, when looking to improve. Now, the second use is for fans, viewers, guest talent, people like that, people who look at the game and talk about it, and that's modeling playstyles of individuals, of teams. Now, of course, some teams will find some use in this, but I think it's really more interesting from an external perspective. My aim with these videos is to firstly uh, improve certain statistics for the purposes I mentioned earlier, and the second purpose is to analyze statistics myself to see what sort of information I can gather. Maybe I can uncover some hidden gems, some underrated players, or even some new ways of playing. We'll see when we get through it. We begin with one of the simplest things I've encountered, and that's utility ADR. Anyone who likes stats and has been digging through HLTV has probably found a table looking like this. This is the team FTU, and from here we can actually pick up some interesting things. Things like round win percentage and utility damage. Now utility damage is a thing that's been kind of, in my opinion, used to mislead people. Uh, not directly, not intentionally necessarily, I'm not saying there's great malice in this, but you'll see tweets like this one from HLTV stating that the number one team in utility ADR is the best at using nades. But that's not quite true. <laughs> of course, they're referring to explosive grenades, which is all this stat measures. Uh, some people have the misconception that it really helps with understanding how teams use Molotovs. It doesn't. Molotovs aren't really meant to do damage. That's not actually what they do. Um, but yeah, it is supposed to show us how much damage teams are doing with their explosive grenades. And the reason why I say it doesn't work is because it's non-specific. This statistic averages a team's nade damage across every map, no matter the map they play. So let's say a team plays 20 maps of Inferno, and then another team plays 20 maps of Mirage. The Inferno team come out at the end of the day with an average nade damage of 25. And you think, oh, okay, they did 25 damage with their nades. Then we take a look at the Mirage team, and across their 20 maps of play, they've managed 22 nade damage. And you think to yourself, well, according to our nice little tweet from HLTV, clearly the team that did 25 damage on Inferno uses their nades better. That's, of course, uh, where everything falls down, really, because that's completely fucking wrong. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, one number's bigger. Clearly that's better. Let's put it in context. 18.5 nade damage is the average a team will do on Mirage per round. Compare this to Inferno, where the average team actually does 32 nade damage per round. So who actually uses their nades better? Well, obviously, now that we know this, it was probably the Mirage team. They do four extra damage per round compared to the average team on that map, whereas the Inferno team were way below the average, only 25 on a map where teams average 32. You see what I'm getting at? So that's why I created this little formula. This is what I came up with. It's quite simple. This creates an expected nade damage for a team based on the maps they've actually played in that time period. Then using that and comparing it to the nade damage they actually averaged, we can get an idea of whose differential is best or worst. In this chart, we see NIP is the best nade team, apparently, with 27.9 per round. And then we have, you know, teams like Ents come really far near the bottom at 21.4. Uh, we have complexity at the all the way in the doldrums with 14.3, which we don't even need to adjust to know that is pretty goddamn atrocious. And yeah, so that's the initial numbers we have. Now let's compare that to the differential compared to their expected nade damage. And here we see some changes. Now there's not too much change. There's also massive swings. In general, teams that play nade heavy maps more are playing better on them. But Vitality jumped to number one, and IP4 to number two. And the biggest climber, Ents, goes all the way up 10 spots, because actually they are pretty much on par. 0.25 above what they should be doing compared to their expected numbers. And Complexity stay <laughs> firmly on the bottom with their minus 9.76 because wow, they just don't care about an ADR, do they? <laughs> now these numbers, they tell us a little bit about what the teams do, but let's go back to those two purposes we had for analytics. Firstly, does this help us with our predictors of success? Now compared to round win percentage, this stat doesn't really correlate very well. <laughs> at all. Now our initial R squared value for the unadjusted ADR 
is a 0.283, 0.284, I think something like that. I'm doing this off the top of my head right now to have the graphs in front of me, compared to our adjusted, which is actually a bit lower at 0.281, I believe. Barely changed, barely improved. I mean, didn't improve at all. But does that mean the stat is useless? I don't think so. Actually, it still has some interesting uses. We can still model kind of which teams play in what styles. Combining this and, for example, the flash assist numbers, we actually get some interesting outputs. Now, for a start, complexity are by far the worst HE users, their flash numbers actually slightly outperformed their expected. So they're not completely hopeless with utility, they've just chosen to emphasize different things in their gameplay. Another interesting case is Na'Vi, who sit pretty much bang on the average for the maps they play. That either means two things, either Na'Vi don't put that much emphasis in these either of these areas, or they're kind of meta setters. They are the ones who are really deciding how often teams should be doing certain nade stacks, certain flash setups, and they're the ones executing them to the highest level, as they're the ones with the highest round win percentage for that time period. And so overall, what have we actually achieved by doing this? Well, I think for a start, we've created a more representative statistic for measuring nade damage. The initial stat that HLTV show, that HLTV post on their Twitter, has glaring issues. And sure, we haven't improved our predictions of success, but I think we have massively increased our ability to understand how certain teams play. For a start, our statistical view of how outsiders play is improved relative to the eye test. When you watch them, they don't feel like a particularly prodigious nade team, and our adjusted stat clearly clears that up. And the opposite is true events. When you watch them, you don't think this is a weak utility using team, uh, especially not on the nade front. And again, our statistic kind of clears that up, that no, they're not really that bad a team when it comes to that stuff. So. We have created a more representative statistic, it's just not a great predictor of success because Counter-Strike is such a vast and complicated game. And that's a part of what makes this such an interesting journey to embark on, which I'm hoping you'll tag along for and yeah, follow me down all the crazy little dark alleys I'm going to go down, engage in conversations and maybe make attempts to contribute to this project, because it is, after all, a project. We are looking at some hefty analysis work and it's being done by a man who has very little formal education. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to advanced mathematics. So, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.